Hello again everyone and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm excited to say we're going to be taking a look at the Black Square TBM850. The aircraft has just released for Microsoft Flight Simulator and is currently available from the Just Flight website. Just Flight have once again been kind enough to provide me with a review copy of the aircraft to showcase for you here today. We'll talk more specifically about the TBM850 later on as we carry out the walk around. For now though, just a few details on the flight. As usual, we are going to be carrying out a full flight and we have some really spectacular scenery for our inaugural outing in the TBM, courtesy of NZA Simulations. We're going to be taking the aircraft from Milford Sound, where we're currently on the ground, up north towards Mount Cook. And for anybody that is familiar with New Zealand or indeed NZA Simulations, you probably don't need me to tell you just how wonderful this part of the world is for flying. I do hope that you enjoy the flights and indeed this detailed look at the Black Square TBM 850. As always, if you do enjoy the video, then please consider giving it a like and subscribing to the channel. Okay, so we are back on the ground in Milford Sound. And this time, of course, we are in NZA Simulation's beautiful recreation of the area. We find ourselves in the cockpit of the Black Square TBM 850 and we've just boarded the aircraft. So we'll dive straight in on the pre-flight checks. The crash lever is selected up, source selector is selected off, generator selector is set through to main. Starter is off, ignition can go through to auto. Exterior lights are selected off, gyro instruments are selected off. Circuit breakers are checked in, the de-icing switches are all selected off, landing gear control handle is selected down. The autopilot trim master switch is selected off, same there as well for the radio master. Bleed air is selected off, air conditioning switch is selected off and same there for the fan air control. Dumb switch is guarded, the ram air handle is stowed. Auto fuel selector is set through to manual, the auxiliary boost pump is selected off. For the tank selector, we're currently on the left tank, we'll take a look at the fuel quantities in just a moment's time. LT switch is set through to armed, parking brake is set on. The manual override lever is selected off. Power lever is set through to flight idle. Prop lever will set through to max RPM. And the condition lever there set to cut off. Lap control is selected up. And coming back up to the overhead now for the source selector will go through to battery. No GPU available for the flight here today. On the voltmeter, we're looking for at least 25 volts, currently showing bang on 25, so we are within limits there on the volts. The exterior lights will take the nav lights on. Same there as well for the strobes, we'll carry out a lights test. Fuel gauges. Fairly low there on the fuel at the moment, we're going to refuel the aircraft here as we carry out the walk around. Currently we've got about 20 US gallons there in each main tank. On the advisory panel, we'll carry out a lights test, so testing system 1. And you can see everything there reading correctly. We also have the master warning and the master caution. And through to system two. Again, everything checks out. So cancelling the master caution, same there for the master warning. On the caution panel there, the oxygen enunciator is extinguished. Exterior lights are set as required. We've got the instrument and the panel lights set all the way up here. On the environmental panel, we'll carry out a lights test. And you can see there we do have the ECS fault caution light. Flaps will set all the way through to fully down. We'll check those out during the walk around. And you can see there the flaps just travelling into the landing position. The landing gear panel we do have three greens and again we'll carry out a lights test. So good check there on system one. And same there on system two. The pitot install heats will turn those on. Cautions are extinguished. And they can both go off once again. And again just cancelling the mast caution. De-icing panel, again we'll carry out a lights test. And that's checked. That's it in terms of our pre-flight checks, we can now head outside the aircraft. We'll go and complete a quick walk around here of the TBM850 and touch on a few details of the external model as we go. I'm sure the first detail that really jumps out at you is we do have this very nicely modelled Pratt & Whitney PT6 engine. The TBM850, for those who aren't aware, is actually Black Square's first full aircraft project. As a result, and as you've already seen, we don't have the usual limitations therefore in terms of doors. 
The TBM-850 is, according to Black Square, also their most advanced aircraft to date. And certainly, going off the documentation, the product does come with some really nice features. For example, we have swappable avionics configurations, the ability to set some 100 random or scheduled failures on the aircraft, systems modelling on the TBM is pretty exacting, again as we might well expect at this point from Black Square, and the add-on also includes state saving of many of the aircraft systems. With the TBM850 being built from the ground up by Black Square, we do also see some features that we've not seen previously from the developer. The flight model of the aircraft is significantly more detailed than we've seen from some of the steam gauge overhaul series previously. According to Black Square, the takeoff, climb and cruise aerodynamic performance matches the real world POH within around 2%. We also get improved turboprop dynamics and modelling which is nice to see. Overall the TBM850 has been created in very exacting detail by Black Square. One area of the add-on which does remain relatively default are the aircraft sounds. The product makes use of the default TBM930 sounds, which are pretty decent, and there are plenty of additional custom sounds added, which are true to life of the TBM850. So overall, undoubtedly the TBM850 is another excellent effort from Black Square. As you can see, very nice external modelling and texturing here as well. Let's now head back to the cockpit and we'll see how the aircraft performs in flight. Okay, so having now just completed the walk around, we've also fueled up the aircraft. We've got about 70 US gallons now there in each main tank. Close up the cockpit door, the air stairs we've just retracted. So closing up the door, making sure the handle is stone locked. The before start checks, the pre-flight inspection has been completed. The nose baggage door is closed, same for the engine compartment. Cabin access door as well is closed and locked. And same here for the pilot door. Park and brake is once again checked and set. Seats and seat belts are fastened and secure. Oxygen pressure is checked, showing about 1600 psi. We'll take the crew oxygen on. No requirement here for the passenger oxygen currently. The starter, once again, that is currently off. The ignition is set through to auto. Landing gear control handle is selected down with three greens. Radio master is selected off. And for the source selector, we're going to be starting on the battery, so we have ourselves set here through to the battery position. We'll carry out a horn test. The door enunciator light, that is currently extinguished, so confirming the doors are closed and locked. In terms of the fuel quantity now, as discussed, we've got about 70 US guns there in each main tank, so 140 here in total, which is plenty for the flight. The auto fuel selector switch can go through to auto. And the tank's currently evenly balanced, so we'll leave ourselves on the left tank here for the start. Engine instruments are checked. We'll carry out the ITT test. So you can see there the needle going through to full deflection. We do have a master warning. And we do have ITT there on the caution and warning panel. Once again, releasing the test switch, the warning is extinguished. We'll cancel the master warning. The exterior lights, as before, we've got the navs and the strobes here selected for the start. And we'll be starting, as discussed, on the battery, so running through the appropriate checklist. The manual override lever is selected off. Power lever is in the flight idle position, prop lever in the max RPM position, and once again, the condition lever in the cutoff position. Source selector is set through to battery. The auxiliary boost pump is selected on. Fuel pressure enunciator is extinguished. Again, just cancelling the master caution. And fuel pressure is now up within the green. Ignition is checked through in auto. So we are now ready for the start. We'll hit the starter. You can see there, big drop in the volts, big draw as well there on the battery. And we do have rotation there on the gas generator. Just wait until we come up through 13% before we introduce the fuel. Again, just cancelling the master caution. There's 10%.
Up now 315, you can see we do have starter there displayed on the warning and caution panel. So introducing the fuel into the low idle position on the condition lever. We should see the ITT max out below 870 degrees within 20 seconds and a max of 1090, we're well below that. And waiting now till we come up through 50% on the NG. We can cut the starter, no automatic starter cutout in the TBM850. So just monitoring the engine parameters, all pressure there looking good. The all pressure enunciator has extinguished and the condition lever can now go through to the high idle position. We'll just wait here until the engine is once again stabilized. So the engine instruments are checked, we've got about 5% there on the torque and about 660 there on the ITT. Auxiliary boost pump go through to auto, you can see a reduction there in fuel pressure as the pump comes offline, the auxiliary pump that is. So the fuel pressure is checked, the fuel pressure caution is extinguished. The main generator caution is also extinguished. And now looking at the voltmeter we're expecting to see around 28 volts, 28 volts is what we have. And a slight charge there currently as we replenish the battery after the start. So we do have a good start for the after start checks, the gyro instruments can all go on. The gyro suction is checked there within the green band, gyro slaving is set. Prop de-ice, just checking through the systems here on the de-icing panel, that's checked we do have green lights. Check the windshield heats here as well. And once again both showing green lights, those can both go off. For the P-turn still warning heats. Again, caution's extinguished. Take those off again for the time being. And for the airframe de-ice. Two green lights, we have seen the system there very briefly cycle as well. So once again that can come off. The inertial separator can go on. And we should see a caution there in a moment as well on the caution and warning panel. On the ammeter we're looking to see below 50, 50 amps and we are seeing well below that now. Generator selector will come through to standby. And seeing the same draw. Back to the main generator. Voltmeter still showing around 28 volts. And for the flaps we'll now bring those into the up position. So just waiting for the flaps to run in again. And we have the flaps indicating up. On the bleed air we can go through to auto. Come through to the on position on the air conditioning. Fan can go through to auto as well. Cabin temperature is set. The airflow distributor is set. Cabin altitude we can leave as is. We're only going to be going up to 13,000 feet or flight level 130 for the flight today. Cabin climb rate is therefore checked. The weather radar and go through to standby. Radio master is selected on. We'll take the EFIS master on here as well. And we'll just work our way through the preliminary screens here of the GTNXI. We'll allow that to initialize. In the meantime, we'll take the autopilot and trim master switch on. For the EFIS Cards, HRS system source, test, okay. we'll leave that on the left hand system. Taxi lights. Is selected on, just checking the electric trim that is working correctly. Inertial separator will leave on. It's a hardened taxiway surface, but there's definitely the potential for some debris around on the taxiway. So pretty much good in here for the taxi. We'll just set up the flight plan here ahead of our departure. So onto the flight plan page, we're going to be departing out of Milford Sound, November Zulu Mike Foxtrot. Initially tracking out towards the Queenstown VOR, which is Quebec November. Hit enter there, there should be multiple waypoints. We want the Queenstown VOR as discussed. And we'll just drop in Milford Sound ahead of that. So November Zulu Mike Foxtrot. We can clear out the secondary waypoint there. After Queenstown, we're looking for the Mount Mary DME, which is Romeo Yankee. And finally, on towards Mount Cook, which is November Zulu Mike Charlie. 
So, pretty straightforward flight plan there. We'll discuss a little bit more about that in just a moment's time. Just clearing our messages for now. And we can tune up as well the Queenstown VOR. That's on a frequency of 113.6. We'll just transfer that straight across. And you can see we are now picking that up on the HSI. Of course, inbound towards the VOR is going to be 093, so we'll set that ahead of time. That's just going to take a little bit of time to slew around. I do find that the selections do take a little bit of time with the TBM 850. So 093 selected on the course. We'll set the heading bug once we're out at the runway. We can set the altimeter here as well. The QNH is currently 1016. That's giving us an aerodrome elevation of around 20 feet. And as discussed, we're going to be climbing up to flight level 130. That should keep us nicely above the terrain and probably as well here above the clouds. We'll pre-select as well our desired vertical speed. Aiming for a climb rate of around 1500 feet per minute. And for now leaving the transponder in the standby position. So we are now ready for the taxi. We're going to join straight ahead here onto the main taxiway. We'll head out towards the holding point for the westerly runway. And once we've got ourselves lined up, we'll run through the before takeoff checks before we depart outbound towards Mount Cook. Okay, so we've now got ourselves lined up here on runway 29. We'll just run through the before takeoff checks. So the part brake is set. We do have the part brake warning there as well on the caution warning panel. We'll carry out a tours test. That's just going to take a little bit of time to initialize. Okay, so the test is complete. We're actually going to inhibit tours initially the departure. Obviously, we've got significant high terrain here on the departure track. And we don't want any warnings popping up here during the initial stages of the climb. So inhibiting tours there on both the GTNXI as well as on the aircraft main systems. Just center up the heading bug here as well now that we're lined up on the runway. So the tours test is complete. In terms of the fuel, still got about 70 US gallons there in each main tank. And we've now automatically switched back over to the left tank here during the taxi. The auto fuel selector, once again, that is set through to auto. Auxiliary boost pump is set through to auto. The flaps will take those through to the takeoff position, as it's a fairly short run out of Milford Sound. And we are indicating takeoff. Peter heats can go on. For the de icing systems, we can leave everything else as is for now. We'll just leave the inertial separator on there as well. On the advisory panel, just showing parking brake and inertial separator, both of which we're currently expecting to see. The engine instruments are once again checked for the flight controls. Those are full and free. Ammeter once again showing below 50 amps there on the draw. Parking brake come off. We'll just hold the aircraft on the brakes. And the parking brake warning is now extinguished. Strobe lights. Our selected on, we'll take the landing lights on, taxi light can go off. On the HSI, showing heading there of around 280 degrees. And same there on the compass, 290 for the runway direction. And once again, the heading bug is aligned. Altimeter, we have QNH1016, aerodrome elevation of 20 feet. Just set the standby altimeter there as well. And again, showing the same heading there on the standby HSI. The altitude selector again, flight level 130 selected. We're actually going to stay on QNH for the flight today, so 13,000 feet. And with a pre selected climb rate there of VS of 1500. Weather radar can go through to the on position. We may encounter a little bit of weather en route. Transponder can go through to out. Landing lights are selected on, ignition is set through to auto. Interior lights are set, the parking brake is released. Taxi light is off. 
On the advisory panel, just the inertial separator. Again, expecting to see that. So we are now good for the takeoff. Again, we're going to hold the aircraft on the brakes with a fairly short takeoff run available out of Milford Sound. So coming all the way through to 100% on the torque. And just feeding the power lever here slowly in order to do so. You can just hear there the auto switch over on the fuel tanks. So feeding from the right, nice sounds on the aircraft overall. There's 100% on the torque, temperatures and pressures looking good, off the brakes. And a little bit of right rudder here to keep the aircraft straight, we do have a little bit of crosswind. Overall there the aircraft is very controllable on the rudder, which is nice to see. Just coming up through 60 knots, and back on the yoke. Just coming up through 80. Climb away nicely up through 100 knots, we'll tap the brakes, bring up the gear. And immediately here, as usual, out through Milford Sound, we'll start a climbing right turn to avoid the terrain off the nose. Bringing the nose up, making sure to keep the speed there in the white arc until we retract the flaps. We'll just wait until we've come up through 500 feet. It's 500, the speed is good, we'll retract the flaps, putting the nose there just start to sink as we do so, and the flaps are indicating up so we're good now in terms of speed, we'll fly the white arc for now, 120 knots during the climb, we'll just fly the aircraft manually until we've got ourselves around the corner out of the valley, we can take the autopilot on thereafter just to get a little bit more of a feel here for the manual handling characteristics of the TBM 850. So for the after takeoff checks, the advisory panel is checked, gear is up, lights are out, flaps are up. We'll leave the power setting for now. So 100% there on the torque, we want to keep the ITT below 850, currently showing 812. And again, we'll just hold off on the autopilot. Heading bug's still good there, we've got 13,000 foot pre-selected. And as you can see there from the map, we've got terrain out to the east of us. That's up to around 8,300 feet on the Bora. So we'll continue the climb here out towards the coastline. Once we're up through 8,300, we'll turn back onto a reciprocal heading to track inbound towards the Queenstown VOR. Got the aircraft nicely trimmed out now. Pitch is around 14 degrees nose up. We're doing about 130 knots during the climb. The TBM 850, definitely a real performer overall. We'll center up the heading bug. And we'll get rid of the inhibit now as well on tours. Victor Whiskey Golf, contact me, 125 dash and away. Contact 125 dash and away, We are steadily making our way above the terrain, just coming up through 4,500 feet. Again, 8,300 is the magic number we're looking for here today. You can see we do have significant terrain off on either side of the aircraft, but as always, stunning views as we make our way out of Milford Sound. And the NZA simulation scenery really is the icing on the cake within the sim. Some of the best sceneries I've seen within the sim. Really beautiful part of the world. We're definitely going to be exploring the scenery significantly more at a later date. So up through 5,500 feet, we'll get the autopilot in. Light directing gone first. We'll come into heading. We've already got the out armed up. We'll take the ore damper and the autopilot master. 
and we'll just lower that vertical speed. We'll do that quite gently. I do find the autopilot fairly aggressive, as you can see there, quite digital in terms of how it actually captures the vertical speed. There's VS Plus 1500. That's actually got us accelerating fairly quickly, so we'll just take a little bit more vertical speed here. We want to get ourselves up as quickly as we can so that we can make that reciprocal turn. In terms of our climb checks then, the power lever is set as required, again keeping the IGT here below 850. We'll actually just come back here as well now on the prop. According to the manual we actually want 2000 RPM as a decent cruise power setting up at 13,000 feet, but just to kill the noise a little bit and also to hear the range of sound, come back to around 1750 here on the prop. Quite surprised as well in reality if you don't bring the prop back on the TBM 850. So power is set, cabin altitude, we need to set cruise altitude plus 1,000 feet. We are cruising at 13,000, so we've got 14,000 selected. That's still giving us a sea level pressure cabin altitude. Just coming up through 8,000 feet, so happy now to make the turn. We'll make the turn out to the right, and we're just coming to half bank here as well. Otherwise the aircraft will go for a full 30 degree bank, which can be rather aggressive. Well, see, Eddie, send Burton by South and runway 16 right, expect approach, then independent two vision. Star 6000, copy 1148, 31. Copy, Jackson, let's pass 6600, fly number 140. Jackson, I'm a Victor approach, because I'm initially 9000, set. 9000, and I'm uh, actually a Victor. Actually, I'm a Victor, yeah, pop right the bottom one. Okay, so we're just coming on to our reciprocal heading of 120 degrees, coming up through 11,500 feet. Just finishing up the last of our climb checks. Cabin temperature, currently showing 22 degrees. Fuel quantity and balance, we've got about 60, 65 US gallons now. The tanks are balanced. That's 65 gallons in each main tank. On the de-icing systems, we can take the inertial separator off. Altimeters, again, staying on the Q&H for the flight today. So we've got a Q&H of 1016 on both sides. Cabin pressurization is checked, we're just coming up on about 5.5 .5 delta PSI there on the cabin. Again, not expecting to see that climb today with a cruise altitude of 13,000 feet. Landing lights are selected off and that is the climb checklist complete. So just approaching 13,000 and just waiting here till we see the CDI bar come in on the radial. You can see they're tracking back towards our flight plan path at the moment, about to come overhead Milford Sound. And currently we're doing around 200 knots over the ground, that's obviously going to pick up here as we accelerate in the level segment. So we'll leave the torque as is. Apparently you can actually keep the torque well above 100% for the cruise, which seems a little bit counterintuitive to me, but that's going off the manual. We're looking for around 112% I believe it is for the torque in the cruise. Again, just making sure we keep the ITT below 850. And currently maintaining 805. Once again, absolutely beautiful views here as you make away over the mountains, inbound now towards Queenstown. And a really stunning view as well off that wing of the TBM 850. These sorts of flights in the sim, it really, I think you'll agree, doesn't get much better than this. That's really rather excellent overall. Beautiful scenery, beautiful aircraft. Overall a very rich and in-depth experience. So of course that's really nice to see from back square once again. Product 292, kilometer sales terminated. 292. Still tracking in towards the VOR currently. We'll pick up the radio, we'll just track that in momentarily and then we'll come into nav. We'll use the GPS for the bulk of the flight here. So once again we're going to be coming overhead Milford Sounds. We're then going to be tracking on towards the Queenstown VOR. Then heading up north towards Mount Mary. And level now, we're doing about 200 knots in the cruise, so a nice high cruise speed as well from the aircraft. And as we expected, flight level 130 or 13,000 foot, keeping us here just above the cloud layer. The weather down south is actually pretty nice. Up north, the weather forecast not looking so great, anticipating potentially some icing later on as well. So we'll stay here out of the cloud tops for as long as we can. Just about to come onto that radial now, inbound towards Queenstown. And in terms of our fuel state, you can see they're slightly lower now on the right tank. 
We are currently feeding off the right, but we do have the system set through to auto. So the aircraft should automatically flip-flop between the two tanks as we progress. Victor, whiskey go from up gut track trek to Ballarat, Sierra Charlie. Showing 37 miles to run inbound towards Queenstown. Victor, whiskey go. In terms of our descent profile later on, we'll just discuss that now. We're going to be enjoying the outside views during the cruise. Planning on a descent rate initially at least of a thousand feet per minute, so that's obviously going to take us around 30 minutes, actually closer to 11 with the aerodrome elevation at Mount Cook in terms of our descent. And we've got a cruise speed here of around 265 knots currently. That's about four miles a minute. So 11 minutes, four miles, we need about 44 miles for the descent. That's what we're going to be planning on later on. We'll obviously descend just a touch earlier than that. We can finesse things as we go. So just coming onto that radial. We can start to track inbound now towards Queenstown. And as with all of the Black Square aircraft, it's very nice to see that Black Square have modelled quite a bit of finesse in terms of the aircraft's radio navigation modelling. You will see the needles deviate, you'll lose the signal behind terrain, things of that nature. So tracking bound down towards the radial, we'll switch over to GPS navigation. And we are still slightly out to the left of our plan track there, so just maintaining the heading for now. We do have quite a few options in terms of navigation. We've got GPS, VOR as you've just seen, and again, as usual with the Black Square aircraft, we've also got the RNAV unit. We're not going to be making use of that today, but for those who are interested, I did make use of the unit with my review of the Black Square Bonanza, so feel free to check the video out there. Again, you can just hear the flip-flop there between the auto fuel tank switch over, so back onto the left. The left tank is now the fuller of the two tanks. It's really hard not to keep checking out the scenery here. This is some of the most beautiful scenery in the sim. Center ambulance 399 departure. Center 399. We are going to have to start looking for other locations, though. I'm aware I did give New Zealand a fair amount of coverage here at the moment, but I just couldn't pass up the opportunity to check out the NZA simulation sceneries. They really are superb. So just come on to our plan course, we're coming to NAV. And as discussed, it really is worth keeping the half bank mode in here during the cruise, otherwise the aircraft will go all the way up to 30 degrees, which is quite unnecessarily aggressive for an intercept. So we'll just get ourselves here onto the plan course for the cruise checks. Power is set as required, engine instruments are checked. Fuel quantities are checked to balance, de-icing systems are set as required. We may need some of the de-icing systems here as we bust our way through the tops of the clouds. We'll see how we go. Inertial separator is once again selected off and ignition not required. That's the cruise checklist complete. Nicely established now on the radial. We'll just centre up the heading bug. And again maintaining around 210 knots indicated here in the cruise. That's giving us a ground speed today of around 270 knots. We've got about 9 knots but most of that's crosswind component. So we're just going to continue to track away here down towards Queenstown, we'll then be making the turn out towards the north. As discussed, the weather is unfortunately going to deteriorate a little bit here as we make our way up towards Mount Cook. But that being said, it should of course make for some fairly interesting conditions later on for the approach. Victor, for you, um, from Flex 3 to 090 and it's time 090 at level, drops from 9 at the same time. Uh, after time 09, I'm based until about time 2. Uh, we can be under set by 09, actually, Victor. Victor, I'm going to be able to find the final one, what's your name? What's your name? 1-4-0, actually. Okay, so welcome back to the cockpit of the Black Square TBM 850. 
As you can see, we're pretty deeply entrenched now here in the cloud layer, and we have just reached our top descent point, about 20 miles to run currently towards the Mount Mary DME. So we'll get the aircraft ascending. Initially, we can come down to an altitude of 9,000 feet. And again, planning on a vertical speed here of minus 1,000 feet per minute. And as before, the aircraft is fairly abrupt in terms of its capture and vertical speed. So it's VS minus 1,000. We'll leave the power settings as they are for now. Build up a little bit of speed here in the descent. Let's discuss for about 50 miles now from Mount Mary. We've got another 25 miles thereafter inbound towards Mount Cook. It's about 35 miles to run. We're probably a touch high on profile, but we can finesse that inbound once we're over the water. In terms of the descent profile, 9,000 feet for now. We'll keep us clear of the terrain. Once we're within 60 miles of Mount Mary, we can descend down to 8,100 feet. And then we'll have to maintain that until we're visual. Again, planning to come in over the lake and we'll probably have to dodge a few rain showers here as we make the approach. There are lots of breaks in the cloud though, so we should be able to pick a hole through the weather and make our way in towards Mount Cook. In terms of the descent checks, the altimeters, again the QNH 1016. We've got that set on both sides. Captain altitude, we're looking for field elevation plus 500 feet. Mount Cook at 2,100 feet, so 2,600. Again, we'll set things at sea level. Pulse lights will take on. So landing lights on and set through to pulse. You can see those are alternating. In terms of the de-icing now, as we're coming through the cloud layer, we've got the prop de-ice on currently. Same there for the left and the right hand windshield de-ice. We'll take the inertial separator on here as well. The airflow distributor is set as required. Ignition is not required. And fuel quantities now, we're down to around 50 air scans there in the left tank, about 45 in the right currently feeding off the left tank and the auto fuel selector as we are on the fullest tank we'll leave that as is last caution there that's for the inertial separator we'll just cancel that and again picking up some speed here as we descend currently up at around 230 knots it's giving us a ground speed now of around 265 and in terms of our distance towards Mount Mary we are through 60 miles so as discussed we can descend down to 8,100 feet and we'll leave ourselves in VS minus 1000 for now. Approaching 10,000, once again we do have the landing lights on. We are good in terms of our 250 knot speed. In GPS at the moment, we'll actually just come back into heading. MS 399, copy clear to us via nature, flight plan road, climb amended, flight level 240. Now we'll turn ourselves now over the water. Actually, slight change of plan here, we do have a break in the clouds, so we'll head flat. Was planning to come in over the water, we can descend down 30,100 foot there knowing we're clear of any terrain. But since we do have a visual break here in the clouds, we'll take the opportunity here to avoid the weather as best we can. Chairman 399, contract amended route direct to Arby. So we'll just come out slightly further to the right here on the heading. Approaching 10,000. And as I say, we'll just have to pick our way through the weather. Hopefully we'll get a break back out towards the northwest. In terms of the forecast at Mount Cook, the wind's out from the southeast, so planning that we'll come overhead the field, we'll make a bit of a left hand downwind back in towards the runway. Check, I mean, route direct RB, ambulance 399. We do have a little bit of a break. It's going to be easier here to fly things manually, so we'll take the autopilot out and start our turn out towards the northwest. Just bring the heading bug around here as well. You can see heading back towards the lake. Victor, Susan, aircraft, O. Victor, thank you. Identification terminated. Victor. 994, continue descent to 6,000. Six right. Uh, I can give you some track shortening if you want. 6,000 and 8,000.94. So the descent checks are complete. We'll run through some of the before landing checks here whilst we've got a moment. Cam lights are set, the altimeters are checked, the decision height not required. We'll inhibit the tour system once again. Obviously not ideal in this part of the world, but we are going to have some fairly significant terrain on the approach, which is almost certainly going to give us a tour's alert, so we'll just get rid of things now. 
to avoid the detraction during the approach. So towards inhibit there on the aircraft as well there on the GTN XI. Fuel quantities, we are down to around 45 gallons in each tank now, the tanks are balanced. Just coming through 6,000 feet, we'll make sure we keep the aircraft coming down. Inertial separator is set on. And we'll hold the checklist for now, the next item is to bring the prop through to fully forward. We can take the gear as well below 178 knots, currently doing around 240 knots. And just about maintaining visual. Hotel, sir, sir. Again, that's the report. You can see that just using the blue descent arc on the GTNX side, we're going to level off at 3600 feet just before the airfield, which is exactly what we want. We'll get ourselves down to 3100 foot as we come overhead the aerodrome. And that'll give us a little bit of room to manoeuvre as well in terms of slowing the aircraft up. So down through 5,000, we'll hug the side of the valley here. Just to make sure we keep clear of that band of showers and maintain visual here for the approach. Hotel, no reported on our traffic. Confirm maintaining fast down. Approaching 4,600 feet, so another 1,000 foot for now here in the descent. And just passing through a little bit of rain as we do so. Not yet visual with the field, but we are visual with the general area of the runway that's just off the nose. So we'll come down now to 3,100 feet. Again, that's going to put us a thousand foot above aerodrome elevation. We're coming in currently on the dead side. Service Hotel, contact centre 124-1. One, one. We'll slowly start coming back on the power as well now. Start reducing that speed. There's the runway just off our 11 o'clock. So nicely visual, we'll make a turn around here in the valley off our 1 o'clock position. Again, we'll have to hug the hills, and it does look as though we've got a bit of rain just overhead the field. So coming back now on the power lever, we'll start reducing that speed, we'll take the gear once we come through 178 knots. As we come off the power, the aircraft definitely getting a little bit heavier here in pitch. And we're just going to make a visual turn. So there's 180, we'll take the gear down and we'll come through to approach flap. And we're going to have to make it a fairly steep turn here as well as we come around the corner. As I say, we'll just hug the side of the hills, give ourselves a decent amount of space in which to manoeuvre. And that should give us a reasonable amount of distance as well on final. So for the last of the four lane checks, the prop lever is set through to fully forward. Landing gear we have down three greens, just holding the flaps. Landing lights are selected on, autopilot has been disconnected. And we can take the next stage of flap here, below 122 knots, so now within the white arc. Come through to landing flap. And again, to letting that speed reduce, down through 30, 100 feet. Continuing here around the corner, through the weather. A little bit difficult to make out here in the murky conditions, but the runway just off the nose. Making a little bit of a dog leg here towards the runway, just to avoid those hills. Feels as though we've got a fairly significant crosswind up here as well. 500. That's dragging us out towards the southwest. Let's check 500. 80 knots is good for now on the speed. And the aircraft needing quite a bit of trim here to maintain the pitch. So the speed's good, we are a little bit high. Happy though that we're going to be able to correct that, just coming back onto profile. And you can see that wind really dragging us across. Pretty nasty conditions here as we approach the Mount Cook runway. Nevertheless though, making for an interesting little approach. So all the way back to idle now on the power lever. I have noticed the TBM 850 does rather like to float. So coming all the way through to full beta range. Getting the aircraft slowed down onto the brakes, we'll vacate off to the right.
taking the first exit here off on the right. It's a very short taxi for us. And as we are essentially single pilot here, making our way in towards the apron, we'll just hold the after landing checks until we've got the aircraft parked up. We'll go and get ourselves parked up here just outside of the terminal building. So we'll clear on the left. Same there on the right. I think we snuck in just in time there in terms of the weather conditions. The rain definitely moving in. That was a great fun little approach though. Again, really nice little challenge in the aircraft. So brakes are on, we'll take the park brake for the offline checks, de-icing systems. Again, just cancelling the master warning there for the parking brake. We can take those off. And again, just cancelling the master caution. So de-icing systems are off, inertial separator is off, bleed air will take off. And same for the air conditioning as well as the fan flow. Weather radar is selected off, flaps are selected up, just waiting for those to run in. In the meantime, we'll get the landing lights off. Take the pulse configuration off there as well. So the flaps are up, taxi lights are off, strobe lights we'll just leave on here until we've got the engine shut down. Oxygen supply is selected off for the shutdown and securing checks. The part brake is set. Taxi light is off. Bleed air is off. Cabin differential pressure, we are showing depressurized. Fan flow is off, air conditioning is off. Power lever, we have been idle now for one minute. The gyro instruments can all come off. And same there as well for the EFIS master. Autopilot and trim master is selected off. Same there as well for the radio master. Prop will bring through to the feather position. And as with most aircraft in the sim, you actually have to specifically drag the prop into the feather position. You can't do that with an axis. At least not in the configuration I'm using. So leaving the prop in the feather position for 15 seconds. We'll just wait here as well. The engine parameters to stabilize, which they now have. So the condition lever can come through to the cutoff position. And we do have a good run down there on the engine. The auxiliary boost pump can go off. Auto fuel selector is set through to manual. Again, just cancelling the master caution and the master warning. Inertial separator is selected off. The tank selector, just need to pull that out and we'll select that through to the off position. Exterior lights, we'll take the strobe lights off, we'll leave the nav lights on. Ignition is selected off. Generator selector will leave on the main. Source selector is selected off. And I'll see the crash lever can come down. And that is the securing checklist complete. Here on the ground in a really rather wet Mount Cook. So there you go guys. I do hope you enjoyed the flight as much as I did exploring the absolutely beautiful scenery of New Zealand in the Black Square TBM 850. As usual, to finish up this review, I'll give you my breakdown on what I think of the add-on. We'll break the aircraft down into some positives and negatives, and hopefully help you decide whether or not the TBM is the right add-on for you. Let's start with the texturing and modelling. Externally, I don't really have any complaints there with the TBM 850. The modelling is done to a really nice standard, and again I really like the fact that you can see that custom modelled Pratt & Whitney PT-6, that's a nice touch. The same goes for the texturing, the aircraft is pretty immaculate externally. Nice high resolution textures as well, so again not too much to fault there. Internally the same is broadly true, certainly the modelling of the aircraft is very nice, and the texturing again very crisp, very clear, very high resolution textures. I will say that the art style to the internal texturing is not my own personal cup of tea. I would say that the cockpit has that slightly more painted texture effect as opposed to looking entirely photorealistic. That really comes down to personal preference though, I do know that some people prefer this sort of styling. I suppose that perhaps just a little bit more wear and tear around the cockpit as well might help give the aircraft that more photorealistic look. It is probably as well worth mentioning the gauges since they seem to be a bit of a black square speciality, but as usual the gauges done to a very nice standard. Very smooth in their operation, very clear, very easy to read. 
And the TBM is a great option within the sim. It is nice now having an analog version of the aircraft. In terms of the aircraft's flight model, a little bit trickier for me to pin down on this one. I've not flown a TBM aircraft in the real world. I've never flown a turboprop aircraft either. It does seem as though the turboprop modeling is significantly improved over the default turboprop simulation within the sim. Certainly, you can hot start the engine, you can over torque the engine as well. There's a nice torque limiting feature which is implemented and modeled. As I mentioned earlier during the video, according to Black Square, the TBM is modeled to within 2% accuracy of the real world performance data for the takeoff, the climb, and the cruise. I believe that currently the aircraft does fall slightly short in terms of its landing performance due to the way that the sim models beta range, but Black Square have said that they'll be looking to address that performance issue with a later update. Either way, obviously the aircraft does hit the numbers pretty well, so in terms of performance, obviously this is a pretty accurate simulation of the TBM 850. In terms of how the aircraft actually feels to fly, I would say that it's broadly on a par with the default TBM 930. There are certainly some caveats to that, the rudder response feels much improved over the default aircraft. You'll notice more torque effects from the engine, the aircraft also seems to behave a little bit more reasonably at the extremes of the flight envelope. The TBM 850 also a little bit more weighty in roll, fairly light still though in pitch. The aircraft does exhibit some of that standard Microsoft flight simulator behaviour. It's fairly light, fairly responsive on the controls. The TBM 850 does also make use of Microsoft Flight Simulator's most up-to-date modelling techniques. So we have prop physics modelled, CFD modelling of the aircraft in general. With this being a standalone aircraft, it has given Black Square the opportunity to refine the flight model significantly more so than we've seen with some of the steam gauge overhaul series. In short, I like how the aircraft flew overall, certainly felt good during the takeoff, easy enough to hand fly. A little bit floaty perhaps during the landing, but again I think that will be taken care of at a later date. But certainly very easy to land, it's easy to get the aircraft down on the numbers with a nice smooth touchdown. As I say, comparable to the default TBM 930 in terms of feel on the controls, but you are getting a much more accurate aircraft here in terms of hitting the performance numbers. As far as the systems modelling on the aircraft goes, I really can't find too much default there. Systems modelling is undoubtedly one of the main strengths of Black Square and their simulations. The aircraft is modelled in incredible depth, and I think unless you are a real-world type-rated TBM pilot, there's certainly more than enough accuracy and fidelity with the add-on to keep most simmers very happy indeed. All of the aircraft systems are modelled in depth as discussed, including for example the electrical system, the associated circuit breakers. There is, as always with the Black Square products, also comprehensive failure modelling that can be accessed via the onboard weather radar. You can schedule specific failures, as mentioned earlier, there's over 100 of them available. Otherwise you can have the aircraft set to random failures with the ability to set as well the mean time between a failure. Engine wear and tear is also modelled and again through the menu you can also repair any failures, repair the engine. And many systems do exhibit state saving as well, so it really does make the aircraft feel that much more realistic and that much more alive. Not everything is covered by state saving, it would be nice to see a greater range of systems covered. My own personal preference is always that the entirety of the aircraft systems are covered. That way when you come back to the aircraft it really feels as though you're picking up from where you left off. As I've already mentioned, not only are the typical aircraft systems modelled, but you've also got, for example, foreign object damage modelling based on the current surface type that you're either taxiing over or taking off from, and you will need to use the inertial separator to counter that. And similarly, again, even the CRT warm-up time is variable based on the current ambient conditions, the current cabin temperature. So a truly excellent level of depth and some features there that I don't recall having seen on any other product previously. One last point on systems, you do get multiple avionics configuration options. Namely, you can switch between a traditional radio stack only. There's also integration with the GNS 530 and GTN 750. It is worth noting as always, the unit featured in today's video was the TGS GTN XR unit that doesn't come with the aircraft as standard. It's an additional payware add-on. And as is common with the Black Square product, you can switch out those units on the fly using a series of selectors within the cockpit. In terms of the aircraft sounds, generally very good. Obviously one of the weaker aspects of the product as discussed is that the TBM850 uses the default TBM930 sounds. Personally, I do think those default TBM930 sounds are pretty decent though, so I don't think it holds the product back too much. You'll obviously have got a good feel for those during the external shots in the video. And the aircraft certainly has a plethora of custom sounds to the TBM850, particularly internally. 
So overall, you do feel much more immersed. It is a much more complete sound set than you see from a default aircraft. As far as documentation goes, very good with the product, as always, from Black Square. You get a very detailed manual running through the aircraft systems, the aircraft operation. As well, you get a full set of checklists, both in the manual and within the sim, which is always great. In terms of the product's additional features, let's call them, that I would say is one of the slightly weaker areas of the TBM850 overall. Again, it is really nice having the modelled engine bay, but I was quite surprised to see no chocks, no tie-downs, no covers. I did have a look through the manual, I didn't see any options there, so I don't think I've missed anything. And similarly, as best I could tell, no ability to remove the pilot models, which I always like as an option. There's also no option to display the pilot models internally, and no visible passenger models. Obviously, none of these are essential features, but given the overall level of quality of the add-on, I think that those sorts of additions would very nicely cap off the TBM 850 overall. As far as the aircraft's FPS goes, I was getting about 80 FPS with the TBM 850, versus around 120 with the default Cessna 152 under the same conditions. So you certainly will take a bit of an FPS hit with the product, but that is to be expected with an aircraft of this depth and visual fidelity. All in all then, once again, I think the Black Square have brought us an absolutely excellent product for Microsoft Flight Simulator, and the TBM850 certainly builds upon all of the brilliant work that they've done in the sim to date. Black Square has fast become one of my favourite add-on developers for the sim. To date, they haven't really put a foot wrong, and it is really nice to see their first standalone aircraft. Certainly, if you're the sort of simmer that gets much more into the system's depth of your add-ons than the TBM, and indeed the entire Black Square range is a great option for the sim. The TBM850 is a very enjoyable aircraft to fly and to operate. It's nice to have something a little bit more unusual as well, perhaps in the sim. The aircraft is very capable, has a nice high cruising speed, can seemingly take off and land at most airports, and therefore makes for a very nice GA long-range cruiser within the sim. Certainly, what you get here is a drastic step up from the default TBM930, and personally as well, I much prefer the analog gauges of the 850 versus the Garmin units of the 930. Anyway, ladies and gents, once again, I do hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, then please consider giving it a like, and if you want to see more content from the channel, then please do consider subscribing as well. If you'd really like to help support the channel further, you can do so by becoming a channel member or patron. Links to both of those are down in the video description below. A very big thank you once again to Just Flight for letting us take a look at the Black Square TBM850, and to NZA Simulations for letting us take a look at both their Milford Sound and Mount Cook sceneries. All in all, I'm sure you'll agree that this combination made for an absolutely epic outing within Microsoft Flight Simulator. Just before we go, as always, a huge thank you to my channel members and patrons for all of your support. It is thoroughly appreciated. And to all of you, I do hope you're having a great day, wherever you are. Take really good care, and I will see you all again soon.